bless you. What are we? Mama what's... wants this suit. You want this suit? I want the suit. Well, it might be a little big for you, Jamie, but we could tailor it. We I reckon will... there's a way. There are beautiful tailors available. Where there's a will, there's a way. And Do that suit is mine. Okay. I will get it delivered. I like this. I love. Just a, I man, love... a, man in, a man in camel. No, I love it. I love it. I don't know if you're a, at, a, at a business meeting or a safari. Yes. That's all I want. It's my Lawrence of Arabia. There's though. a Robert Evans vibe going on. Yes. Correct. Right <laughs> right. No socks. I know. Look, that. Show us. Look at that. A loafer. Look at this. No socks. Is that very. Was that very. That was just, Robert it was just a very Robert Evans oh, wow. kind of vibe. Okay. I just, I'm very I do not have the confidence to expose my ankle in such a way. <laughs> or you look like it's a choice. I I look like I've forgotten my socks. That's what would happen. What happened to your socks is what people would say. Let me just say this to you. He has nicer ankles than I do. And I'm telling you, when you, I don't know if any of you have grandmas that have those nasty big ankles, <laughs> but I had my, she's gone a long time, Grandma Helen. <laughs> but I received Grandma Helen here and in my ankle. Right. And I'm telling you, when I'm with a man who has nicer ankles, I get very intimidated. <laughs> And I'm not going to show you my nasty ankles. That's why I cover them. That's why. That's it. I mean, it is. It's a. It's a. No. It's a beautiful, beautiful ankle. Beautiful, but nasty. <laughs> now, I meant neck and shoulders. Sure. Right. Yeah. Of course. Uh -huh. Now you both have a lot in common. You both grew up in Los Angeles. You both have parents who were working. Actors. We're LA people. You are. We're I'm born and raised. Cedar Sinai babies. And I was of Cedars of Lebanon yeah. before it became before Cedar Sinai. Yeah. Look at this. Beverly because Hills I'm... High. My mom went to Beverly Hills High. I'm older than him. She's. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. But you both had parents who were performers. Chris, was it inevitable that you would join the family business and become an actor? Absolutely not. Really? No, absolutely not. I mean, I grew up around it, and so it's like I, at the dinner table, you would talk about the day at work and. My dad, uh, you know, what happened on the Quantum Leap set, or what happened... My dad, actually, this is a nice factoid, went back to shoot an episode of Magnum P.I. this year. His first time on Magnum P.I. was 1984. He played Tom Selleck's dad in a flashback. I thought that was kind of cool. Anyway, well, he just went back just to do it? Yeah. Wow. Anyway, so we talk about it at the, at the dinner table, but I wanted to play sports. I had no interest in doing it, and I think it makes a lot of sense in hindsight that I ended up doing it, but it's not... I'd never had a passion for it. It was... You know, it's like, it's just a gig, it's a job. Sometimes there's work, sometimes there's no work. People, you know, you would audition all the time. My mom would audition. At that point, my grandmother had retired, but it was, uh, you know, it's a gig. Yeah, but I sort of feel like I can't imagine you not being an actor. I just can't. I didn't really I... have much else going on. So yes. I'm thankfully, <laughs> thankfully I, I landed on it. What's this? What's happened? What's happened to your face? <laughs> What's happened? Are men allowed to say what's happened to your face? No. <laughs> no, because <laughs> you were doing this. No, you were doing well, this. I mean, honestly, you were going, you were James going. Gordon. No, you were going. You just said. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing this. What's you happened? went like this to your <laughs> face. Yeah, because he took a chair. You were like. I, I didn't know what I'd done. What did I do? What did I, I what happened? Uh, it's called listening. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was listening to Mr. Pine, and then I was listening to you, and all of a sudden you kind of did this weird thing. <laughs> Looked at me and said, what's wrong? No, because I thought face? you were thinking it was a bad question. I thought you were going, why are you saying that to him? No, He's the okay. why, why are you saying that it's to all good. him? Just keep, <laughs> keep trying. Right. I tell you the thing I am most envious of Chris Pine in his life is last time I saw you, we were on an aeroplane, and Chris Pine has a Nokia flip phone. Oh, wow. And oh, wow. doesn't have an oh. iPhone, didn't have any of those oh, stuff, and I... still have it? I was like, I, it's, oh, it's all I want to do with my life, is have so, just... Now, this is what I, so, have you bought one? Yes. And you're threatening to use it, but you have not used it yet. Well, because, I'm, because everybody here... Uh, sat over there, and again upstairs, they're like, oh, you can't use you won't even be able to talk to you. You're like, the absolute use is how you're going to approve cuts, so you yeah. know these things. And I go, yeah, yeah but I want to do it, and I'm, yeah. I'm really tempted to, to do, do it. Do in the summer. Flip phone. Just get rid of it. You go did, back. I did. I, I want to play Snake, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I did it for three and a half years, and then recently I, I got a smartphone again. <gasps> yeah. Oh my God, you've gone back. Why? Well, I'll tell you what, man, they make it so incredibly difficult yes. to be analog. So, for instance, so there's no, so there was no internet on it, which is fine. I don't mind that. I got it for that specific reason. But, like, group text messages. Couldn't do that. Yeah. 
someone sent a photo, it would say, MMS, go to this website to retrieve the oh, photo. Oh, no, I can't yeah, do that. no one's interested in that. And I yeah. was, quite frankly, really into the T9 of it all, kind of made it an interesting endeavor to type anything, yeah. like anything. Yeah. Um, but at a certain point, then I found myself, then I had an iPad, then I had the, the cell phone, which was great, because if you decided to go out, you could just take the cell phone, and that's great. But then if I had to go somewhere and I didn't know where I was going, I'd take the iPad. So at a certain point, I was cheating, I felt like a poser. Right. Um, <laughs> but let me tell you something. So then I get this, at f this crack machine yeah. phone again. Yeah. So I, I, I'm a voracious reader. I love reading. Yeah. From like November to January, I think I may have read 12 books. Just back to back to back to back to back. I get this phone. I'm looking at the hours. I'm already at like three and a half hours a day, yeah. averaging. Yeah. That three and a half hours, that's all my reading time gone. Gone. This is what I, th this I don't, does, I don't like you with a smartphone. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it either. I don't like Chris Pine. I don't, I don't I like, like that either. Nokia banana phone you yeah. have. I'm going to try it this summer. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and be Chris Pine this summer. Hey, if you go back to it, I'm because I'm, I'm already I'm already sick of it. That's driving me crazy. Yeah. Oh, well, we can make a we'll make like a, a bro. We'll set up our own group text. There we'll we just go. Be analog dudes, man. T9, yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, Jamie, what? I am excited to talk about this. I want to talk me? about Stop your yelling. incredible new film. Oh, it's crazy. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Guillermo <laughs> loves it. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. <sighs> OK, so what it's about. Every review says they can't describe what it's about. It's about love. It's really about love. It's about family and love and kindness in the midst of a sci-fi martial arts family dramedy dysfunction uh, with sex toys and raccoons and a pig. Story of my life. And all of it takes place in multiverses, the multiverse where there are concurrent universes going on all at the same time, hence the title, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. And all of it is centered on a Chinese immigrant family, a woman, Michelle Yeoh, who runs a laundromat, and her gay daughter, and her marriage is splitting apart, and they are about to meet with the American dream, which is the IRS. Mm. And I am Deirdre Bobirdra, who is the <laughs> IRS agent who wields a lot of power. And if any of us have ever been to the IRS mm. or the DMV, and by the way, of course, by saying the IRS, I'm going to get audited. <laughs> I haven't been audited. I'm 63 years old. I've never been audited. TikTok tomorrow. Hi, Jamie. Yeah. Yeah, they're <clears throat> auditing you. Wow. Because they wield power. Yeah. And that power turns sinister in the movie. And the, the reviews for the uh, are, film are, are off the scale. Off the scale. You just saw it for the first time in a movie theater. I, I decided what was not that to like? see it until I went to Austin. It was, it was beautiful. I bet. I was sobbing. People are sobbing because it's so moving. And it really makes you look at the end of the day and go, what are we doing? Mm. Why are we doing any of what we're doing? And the only thing that matters is love. The only thing that matters is human beings.